I need to crawl out of my funk. Ever since I learned Dad wasn't actually Dad, but just an AI he helped the government design, I've been... I don't know. A funk probably doesn't really cover it. The bombs fell, the world caught fire, and I spent the last 100 days in my hole building this bunker. My dad, I, I mean the AI, told me the rescue teams were coming, but it seems his programming wasn't completely finished, because to it, the whole thing was just a training exercise. To me, it was all too real. After 100 days, just when I thought the rescue teams were about to break through and save me, the AI asked if I wanted to play again. Not cool. Somehow, the end of the world didn't seem quite as terrible since I could talk to my dad, but now that I know I'm alone, well, I guess I've really been alone for some time. I just didn't know it. It's been days, nearly two weeks since I did anything. Maybe I'll try to contact my dad, the AI. Hello? Are you there? Son? I wasn't sure you would contact me again. Don't call me son. I don't even know what to call you. Well, my official designation is heuristically programmed algorithmic computer beta 9.8343. Wait, you're Hal? Your father called me Hal. From 2001. Uh, of course he did. Okay, I can't call you Hal. How about Cal? That'll be fine. I like that name. Stop it. You're a computer. How long is this contact before you pass out of range again? Another minute and eight seconds. My orbit is adjusting to geosynchronous with your position, but it will take ten days until I achieve that. Okay, I am about bored out of my skull down here. Do you have any entertainment in your memory? Yes, I have access to YouTube backup servers. They are buried deep underground and seem to be online still. You have YouTube? Only a very small percentage of its total capacity. I believe one of your saved playlists is on the backup server. Which one? I have Don Quantum's complete Fallout series. I will download it to your computer now. <laughs> Fallout. Hilarious. Thanks, Cal. We're just going to head this way towards, I think this is the Morgantown area. And uh, what's it say there? Yep, Morgantown. City limits. All right. So that up there is Morgantown. And I need some supplies. Nothing severe but you know we can find maybe some steel some aluminum uh maybe some caps definitely need to find a couple of things kind of repair our weapons a bit maybe some of our armor too if we can find some fiberglass or ballistic fiber that might be really good i don't know if it's just hearing someone's voice or what but i feel motivated i think i'm i think i'm ready to do something One hundred days in hardcore Minecraft, living in a Fallout bunker. Well, two hundred now. I had so much fun writing the story for the first one hundred days with our hero, Fred, the ideas for a two hundred days story are just flowing. I'll be lightly roleplaying this as I do in all my one hundred days videos in order to better tell the story. We'll be continuing to progress through the 1.12.2 mod pack called Stoneblock 2 with a couple added mods you can find on Discord, link below. If you enjoy this kind of Minecraft storytelling, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any new videos from either a 100 Days World or my epic single-player long-term survival world, Tovalin. Alright, enough of all that. Let's go see what Fred is up to. I started day 101 by checking out some of Dad's book. Dad was so brilliant. He saw the end coming and basically wrote a guidebook on how to survive the nuclear apocalypse. We lost him about eight years before the bombs fell, but by then he had mostly completed the book. It's been keeping me alive for 100 days, and I expect, knowing how smart he was, it will continue to keep me alive for another 100. 
I spent the morning of day 101 checking on the chickens, improving storage, and then just thinking, I need a big project, a new big project. Day 101, it feels like New Year's Day. It's a fresh start. I can't keep going on the things I was doing before when I thought I was talking to my real dad instead of just an AI simulation. I need to take my mind off things. Cows, yeah, I need to make some liquid cows. Dad theorized that after a nuclear attack, cows could possibly get irradiated and gain the ability to create other liquids. I need a space to do that, so I lowered the elevator another floor in, dug out a large room for, well, for cows. I worked in the elevator all day. It's a funny thing. Whenever I think I've figured out this elevator system, I try to add one little thing and basically everything breaks. Feels like it's been a month since I messed around on the tack in the bunker. Weird. I got the elevator working down to B3, where I'm going to be housing the cows and the fluid tanks. Never really imagined anything like this, so I'm going to want to do some experimentation to see how this entire thing works. I dropped down some water and some cow bait, and hopefully they'll just somehow wander into my bunker so I can capture them. Is this like breeding chickens? I sort of feel like maybe it's going to be. Oh boy. Here we go again. To breed all these cows, I'm going to need a lot of leather, I believe. And good news, there actually is a leather chicken. Bad news, somehow I missed it. I thought I had actually bred literally every possible chicken, but somehow I missed the leather chicken. So, yeah, back to chickens. That's, that's fun. That's fun stuff. I'm going to kind of just let these chickens passively breed while I do some other stuff. Maybe I'll start at my mob farm again, because rotten flesh, I believe, can also be turned into leather. So, maybe we'll go at this from two different angles. Hey, good news, I got all four kinds of cows already. I need to start this whole shebang somehow with a milk cow. Uh, yeah, okay, not a regular cow that gives you milk. Kind of confounded me for a little while, but a different kind of cow that gives you milk, right? You got that? Cool. Additionally, I also need a water cow, a seared stone cow, and a lava cow. All those can actually be crafted using those materials. I think I need to breed them manually. Seems kind of awful, but... All right, we'll work this out. I have a great supply of wheat from the last 100 days, so we should be fine. I did some work on my cow area today, just breeding them up. I put some wood on the wall and make it kind of look like a, a barn, I guess, kind of. And I think it's kind of nice, nice place for the cows to live here. We might uh, readdress this later, but okay, so that's good. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to get something that's going to allow me to pick up items without going into their pens every time. And I think I know just what to make. Yeah, I made a ring of magnetization. I don't know why I didn't do this any time before. This is going to be great. Anything that drops, I can just pick right up into my inventory. It's going to save a lot of time and make sure I don't lose any resources too. It does use RF, but RF is basically unlimited for me at this point. So that's cool. I have my cow room a bit more situated now. I wanted to wait and go with a little bit more of a science lab than a barn. So I'm going to change out all the grass for white concrete and the walls for probably something else eventually. These cows are going to spend their lives in very tiny little crates, but look, the book assures me that they love it there. I don't know. Uh, it seems fun. I found these blocks called baby filters, and I put them under the breeding pens, so every time I breed the cows, their baby just drops right through. Should be a good way to keep them clear. Later, I'll have to figure out how to get them to grow faster, but I think this is going to be a pretty good head start. For example, if I'm trying to breed water and lava, the odds are better that I'm going to get a water or a lava cow than an obsidian cow. So I want to be able to separate them easier and having them drop down to sort of my basement here, I think is going to be a lot nicer and easier to sort them out. Spent another day still working on automating these cows. I found a machine called an animal grower. This thing's pretty cool. It grows animals, but only in a small radius. It's not especially helpful. I'll need to work on something that's going to give it an upgrade. One thing I'm sure about is I'm going to have a lot of steak to eat. Every breed that doesn't give me the result I want, some sort of juicy, delicious steak is the result. So I guess win-win? Yeah, sure, I think so. I have a few more cows. It is solid progress. I have a plan for tanks, but I think after more than a week of this, I just really need to break away. I tried lighting up the big room, but man, it's really dark. It just feels like a basement. In fact... Everything just feels like a basement these days. I don't know. I, I just miss, I just miss outside, you know, I just miss the, I just miss the outside.
went back to Dad's book today. In the stories chapter, there is something called wireless crafting, and it sounds pretty amazing. I keep running up and down, up and down, up and down the elevator to my ME terminal. I kind of forgot wireless is even a thing. Well, I created all the parts, but I really couldn't figure out how to get it to work. I have to dig into this tomorrow, but for today, yeah, I think I'm just going to go to bed. After sleeping on it, I woke up refreshed and with an idea. I think I need to combine my wireless thing I made and turn it into a wireless access point. Now that I have this sweet little thing, uh, well, it's basically out of RF energy. I couldn't recharge it in my Actually Editions charger, so I made a thermal infuser. This thing works, but it's very, very slow, so I upgraded it all three tiers and was about to do the resin upgrade, but I don't have any lumium. There's a chicken for it, and I never made it. So, chickens. While I was waiting for more chickens to breed, I did change out my old reliable superheating element for a couple blocks of awakened draconium. This stuff is literally double as fast at melting cobble. We are already at very good 60 uh, times speed, and now we're at 120 times speed. It is a uh, yes, yeah, it's pretty darn amazing. I was trying to make wireless booster cards for my wireless access point so I can get range further around my bunker, but in order to do that, I need to make a pulverizer and upgrade it to make ender dust. Yeah, I have a sag mill that does basically the same thing, but it doesn't make ender dust, so that's cool. I need another machine that basically does the exact same thing. It's fine, no problem, good for the future. Once I made these wireless accent point things, it's really great. It's going to cost more RF, but again, RF really shouldn't be a problem. I'm hopeful I should be able to actually receive signal throughout my entire bunker once I upgrade this just a little bit more. There is another way I can do it, something called infinity energy, but I actually don't know what that is, and I'm already running out of the little bit I've managed to find, thanks to loot chests and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I just need a greater regular wireless range, I think. I put up a whole bunch of capacitor banks in my power room. I'd like to have a backup and eventually a way to monitor my RF in out a little bit easier, but not with these basic boys. I need to upgrade them first, so for now they're basically just going to be here for show. The main thing with these basic capacitor banks is they just input output slowly, so when all my power is coming from two wireless energy cells for my entire base, the amount of power I have isn't an issue, but moving it quickly actually is. So I'm going to need the upgraded versions of these before I can really rely on them. I have a confession to make here. You don't want to know where I've been going to the bathroom for the past 113 days. Let's just say that the mobs that spawn in my dark room just die from refusing to breathe. Anyway, it's time for a bathroom, and this is going to be awesome. I am very, very happy. I can shower, I can wash my hands, I can take a bath. It's amazing. I can't express how much better I feel with a shower. It's like maybe living down here isn't so completely depressing and alone. Maybe I can make this a home after all. I want to take a solid day off tomorrow, so I spent all of day 114 with my chickens and cows. The chickens are close, still working on making some solarium, but I'm very close to the end. The cows have basically infinite time to go, but whatever. We'll get there when we get there. There we go. Oh, 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 we got trouble. Uh oh. I don't like it when they get this small. Ugh. Okay, dude, uh, we're gonna have to go melee on you. I don't know if it's just from watching Fallout videos all day yesterday or what, but I just decided that I want some light and some nature or something. I broke through a wall in my living room and made a little room. I filled it with a couple trees and painted the walls light blue. I even made some clouds on top. It's pretty nice. I made some curtains too, but man, I have no idea how to actually hang these up. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I can't figure it out. I want to start carving out a room for the fluid tank soon, but before that I want a battery for my drill. And I think I may have to make more batteries in the future, so it's an auto crafting day. This does set up another issue, though. I am just about out of crafting interfaces, though. 
I can expand, but I really want to future proof this by making it a lot more smooth to be able to expand whenever I need. And so this sets up, well, another big project. I spent today making some Fluix crystals and really deciding how exactly I want to do my auto crafting and basic setup. I've redone this twice already and I really don't want to do it again after this. I do think I have a plan and to do that, I'm gonna to need to dig out a large room under my main room. So we'll actually have three floors of crafting, auto crafting and more auto crafting. It's, it's gonna be great, but yeah, it's, it's more digging. First thing I did was I made a lot more ME controllers. This is gonna give me more faces to attach cables to because the max cable that you can make is a dense cable and it only holds 32 different interfaces and machines and things at the same time. Next thing I did is I tore down everything. I took it all off and threw it in crates. After I did all that, I could actually get to digging in earnest. I wanna dig out this second auto crafting floor and make room for a whole lot of interfaces and molecular assemblers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it, it's a good thing. We're getting close. I worked all day on moving stuff around. There's something that feels really good about this. It's like while I'm untangling the wires and cables around here, I'm kind of untangling my brain. I have a lot left to unpack, but while I'm keeping my mind busy, I'm not thinking too much about what's going on up top. Nice. I got the two crafting rooms all set up. They don't look absolutely amazing yet, but for now, I think it's pretty streamlined and sweet. I added two more molecular assemblers and eight interfaces for a total of 72 new auto crafting slots. Should do me for a while, I think. Super nice. My auto crafting room is so clean. I remember when I was a kid, my dad would always tell me, go clean my room. I never wanted to, of course, but he reminded me of how it would feel when I'm done. It's always amazing. It's so satisfying. This is the first time ever I've been in this bunker that I feel that again. I feel satisfied. I did want to get back to cows today, but first I checked on the chickens and I got my 10, 10, 10 soul sand chicken up and rolling. That's super cool. Soul sand was a bit of a problem before. There are a few things with these cows that I think I'm gonna need in just massive quantities. I set auto crafting up for hay bales, cow stalls, and ender tanks, so it should be all set up. I'm gonna definitely need to write down colors and what each one corresponds to. All right, I really like how this is going. I'm gonna take a lot more space than I originally thought I would need, but it's gonna be nice to have all my fluids laid out like this. I'm a huge fan of these liquid cows. Later on, I'm gonna make big holding tanks underground here, but just for now, having the ender tanks hold it, uh, that's fine. That's gonna make auto crafting and all that stuff with liquids actually possible. I found a way to speed up the cow production massively. I can grow them almost instantly now by using my cow stick. If I hit them with it, I can pick them up and when I put them back down, they are fully grown. Or even better, if they just bred, I can pick them up and put them back down and they're ready to breed again. <laughs> Little cheaty? Yeah, maybe. But you know what? Uh, it's fine. I am going to allow it. Using my new speedy way of breeding cows, I actually knocked off a bunch of quests from Dad's book. This should be so good. I had to expand my cow room a bit already, and at this rate, I'm going to probably need to expand quite a bit more. That's a good thing. Cows, man. Holy cow, literally. I finished it. I really dug in there, but you know what? I have every possible fluid cow. I'll mess more with the tanks and all that later, but these dudes are just going to be rolling now, producing so much liquid. This is amazing. After finishing my giant cow project, I want to move on to something completely different. Chickens. Actually, I'm just so close to closing out Dad's chapter on chickens, I just want to finish it so I can actually completely move on. I need to make some chicken seeds to finish this chapter, and to do that, I have to kill some chickens with this special soul knife thing. 
And I did it. In only three days, if you don't count all the days before that, I finished two chapters. Also, side note, I only have one chicken left to get all the 10, 10, 10 chickens. It's pretty amazing. At some point in the future, I would really like to get into some mystical agriculture, but I think I'll switch over to power. First, I'm gonna sit down on this couch and take a much deserved nap. I've been digging out my new power room and I keep needing to stop to charge my drill. Even having a second tiered battery, yeah, it's still a drag. Took a break from digging and taught my auto crafting a few more helpful recipes to improve my battery life. It's another auto crafting day today, but a little different this time. I taught my ME system all the actually additions in power blocks. I really love this line of tech and can't wait to go further down it when I move into more farming. Yeah, but first, more power. To build my power tower, I really want to have the best RF transfer I can, and I think for that I need to dip into a kind of tech called thermal expansion. It's a little complicated to get going on this, but it's one thing just to make each piece, but it's entirely something else to automate every step along the way. The automation of this is a little interesting. It's not something I ever thought I would be into, but it's like a puzzle with different solutions. Each step along the way opens up more issues, but also more answers. And there's not just one right answer either. There's many different ways you can go about solving these puzzles. It's very fun, actually. I did it. I automated cryostabilized flux duct. Absolutely amazing. This thing can literally transfer any amount of RF. Literally unlimited. Now the downside that I discovered is that my power cell system can only export import 20,000 RF. Now look, that's a lot. Like that's seriously a lot. And these are pretty cheap power cells to make actually. So I could actually just put a power cell every few dynamos and should have basically unlimited power. Yeah, I think so. I made something today that is absolutely unnecessary, but super cool. It's called a viaduct. I found it deep in dad's book. It's right out of these future prediction pictures from the 1930s with people zipping around in tubes. Seriously, it's really cool. I built it, I automated the manufacturing of it, and I placed it in my power tower, and I have absolutely no idea how to actually use it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up in the book, but man, it looks cool. The world's really getting scary out there right now, isn't it? I saw a press conference today, and people were getting really nervous. I hope whoever's in charge of the nuke button has a good head on their shoulders. I really do love this game, but I don't want it becoming a documentary. I've been putting some extra time down in the basement. I just feel like I need to be ready in case things hit the fan. Something about watching this old playlist just makes me happy. I know the Dom is most likely dust like everything else above me, but just hearing him talk about things while playing Fallout, it's just a little slice of humanity that I sorely need right about now. Look, living down here alone, it's okay. For all I complain about the solitary nature of it, I am grateful to be alive. Spent the rest of the day connecting some parts of my bunker. I'd like to be able to get around a bit easier without always going back to the main room and the main elevator. So I dug a path between the second floor of the power tower and the second floor of the chickens. I think it's uh, looking really cool here and it's gonna be nice to get around a bit easier without always relying on the main area. I connected my bedroom with the workshop via viaduct. Did I need to? No. Did it really make sense? Also no. Is it freaking awesome? Yes. Yes it is. Day 42 was spent working on the hallway in my house. <laughs> Did I say house? I don't know about that. I don't know how I feel about this area, actually. It's nice. It's homey. I made a clock and some tables, carpet to make it feel good. But when I looked out my window and saw the little room I had made to see the virtual outside, eh, it's no good. I do have an idea, though. I started the day by digging outside my bunker. Well, not really outside, but outside my living room window. I decide that I am going to eventually go stir crazy in here and I need to simulate the outdoors much, much better. But first, my drill is making me a little bit crazy. So I built some augments. I made a 5x5 augment and a speed 3 augment. This should actually be a lot better. Also, I realized if I'm going to be digging a lot, I'm going to have a lot of cobblestone, which led me to make four more deep storage for my four highest quantity items. Seeds, carrots, wheat, and of course cobblestone. I really need to turn off my farms. I haven't eaten a single carrot 
uh, yet, I don't think. And I have like 50,000 of them. I actually can't believe I waited so long to do this next part. I made an interface terminal. I can just drop my patterns into this thing and they'll go where they need to go. I'm such a dolt. This would have saved so much time over the past 144 days. Oh, uh, whatever. It's done now and we're all good. I had maybe a brilliant idea. I found a block called sky block. What if I made my outside roof out of that? Could be totally amazing. If it works, and I don't know that it will, it could simulate the sun, the moon, stars, even clouds. I could get a simulated suntan. Well, maybe not that last part, but I figured out how to autocraft endstone by combining glowstone and lava. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense or something. One thing thinking about placing so, so, so much of this is I'm going to need a better exchanger. I upgraded my exchanger to a 13 by 13 exchanger and set it all to auto crafting. So placing these sky blocks should be a breeze. Heck, I might actually feel a breeze once I get this all done. Oh, this is wonderful. The inverted sky block is so perfect. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with my new exchanger, but that's okay. I can use my wand to place a lot of it. You know, while looking at this, I'm imagining my backyard. It's going to be great. I can almost breathe again. Yeah, I, I feel like I can actually take a deep breath and breathe again for the first time in a long time. Yeah, this is great. I have made a lot of skyblocks over the last two days. My new yard is going to be so epic. I am very excited about it. I decided to do skyblock on both the ceiling and also the walls to sort of simulate looking out over the fence or the community area or something. I don't know. I, I, I'm super excited. I just can't wait to start laying grass and really get things rolling here. Fantastic. At night when the day was over, I sat by my window and I watched the moon rise for the first time in a very long time. I worked in the backyard all day. I started laying out my dream 60s ranch house today. It's just gonna be a facade, but I wanna feel like it's a backyard. I don't need to actually build the full retro house, brick, a driveway. Oh, I think this is gonna be so nice. The house is really coming along. I slapped a dark oak roof on it and it looks really cool. I think I'm gonna take tomorrow off and just watch some of Dom's follow videos. I'm just about done with the series and uh, well, it's going to be a bummer when it ends because that's, well, I, that's the end, I guess. All right, everybody, I think this is where we're going to call it an end. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate all the support that you guys always give me and the channel. So if you like this episode, do me a huge favor, drop a like on this video, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments field below. If you really like this episode and you really like the channel, do me even a bigger favor and hit that subscribe button because your support means so much for me and the channel to keep continuing making this content. Until next time, I'll see you all later and stay safe in the wastelands. I spent more time on my backyard today. The real surface is very, very, very radioactive and will be for some time, so I may be stuck down here. But, you know, it's not so much stuck down here now. I have a pool, I have a backyard, I have pool chairs. What a difference a day makes. I began work in earnest on the power tower today. After a good bit of just decorating and all that, it's nice to get back with some real tech and some real base improvements here. I've decided that for the foreseeable future, I will continue to use lava generation. Look, it's working great and it's basically endlessly expandable. I'm very excited to see this project develop. The nice thing about this power tower is that it's only about seven or eight blocks uh, tall, modularly. So I can just expand this down eh, forever and ever, I guess, but I won't need to. I'm making tons of power. I'm going to upgrade all my dynamos to the maximum level. I, I don't think I'm going to have to upgrade this really ever unless I start doing something really insane. But, you know, I'm not planning on building a rocket and blasting off into space anytime soon. So this should be good for really a long time. I, I'm into it. I finished the upgrades on all the dynamos. These things are monsters. 
I can't see running power anytime soon unless I start powering up a full city. Maybe I can get a new friend or something to come live with me. <laughs> Well, look, I'm starting to really struggle, though. After upgrading the dynamo today, I just kind of went to bed. I think the total loneliness is beginning to wear on me again. I've been working so hard at improving my life here, but... I don't know. Why bother? I have food. I have power. What else do I need? I don't know. I don't know what else I need. I feel like I'm just a yo-yo of emotions these days. I get so excited to have some sort of minor upgrade to my bunker, and then just so down when the overwhelming loneliness of my situation wears on me. There's no real answer. There's nothing I can really do about it except for continue to take the joy in the accomplishments that I'm making while I continue to work here, and just hope that the loneliness doesn't get to me too bad. I think I just need to break out of my funk and do something different. I grabbed my drill today and went to work on my sub-basement. I just need to level it up and fix up the walls. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's just a sub-basement. It's just where all the cables and wires go. But I guess it felt good to just do some basic manual labor. I could turn off my brain, forget about my situation, and just drill. I dug it out, even the floors, walls, and ceilings, and began replacing the stone with at least some chiseled cobble. It looks man-made, if nothing else. I don't think there's any need to use concrete or anything else down here, but just to make it look less terrible when I need to come down to run cables and such. I wish I had an easy source of terracotta. That would be a nice floor here, but the only way I can figure to make it is pretty slow and boring. I don't know. Maybe I'll expand that all later, but for right now, it's a satisfying project to be done with. I did finish the sub-basement, and thanks to the bunker gods for this exchanger and wand, Got it all changed out. Concrete floors, chiseled cobble walls, and chiseled stone ceilings. Nice. This is probably not going to win a flip or flop house competition, but you know what? For right now, it's good enough for me. I went to expand my storage dramatically, and again, I want this to be basically the last time I expand my storage dramatically. So, we are going to be going all in on drive storage, deep storage, and then later add ender chest and ender tank storage. Yeah, I'll get to those ender storage parts later. It'll be quite a grind. I ripped out my old drive room and I made it about eight times bigger. I'm going to have room for 32 drives, 32 deep storage, and later room for all the ender storage I could possibly want. Should be a very solid way to keep all the items I'll ever need in my life. I swear, if I need more storage after this, I'm just going to move up to the surface. You know, I like elevators. I really enjoy going up and down my elevator. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe it feels like a mall or something like that, but I really do like it. So I decided to add another elevator to my base. Instead of just add more floors to my current one, I actually dug a hole in the back of my new drive room and I'm going to put a small elevator there. That way, if I need to pop up and down for cable management, I can use that elevator instead of run all the way over to the middle room again. I've messed with my elevator a lot, and you would think I would be able to actually just put down a new one here, but I can't. I can't. All day long, I tried to get the screens attached, and all day long, I failed. Just frustrating. Just really frustrating. I think I know how these things work, and I do it, and it doesn't work, and yeah. Yeah, frustrating. Red? Are you there? Yeah, Cal. Uh, what's going on? Something happened today. I can't explain it. Okay, don't keep me in suspense. Someone posted a new video to your Fallout playlist. Um, I'm sorry, what? It was just uploaded to the backup servers. That means someone's out there. Hey everybody, or I mean, 
Well, nobody, I guess. And welcome back to Fallout. It seems like we've finally done it. We've blown ourselves up. I've managed to survive in my bunker, where I'm extremely, extremely bored. And I decided to continue the series, just to pass the time. I don't expect anyone to ever find it, but with my old YouTube backup server still online, why not? Maybe someday a future generation will come across my content and learn about me. Hey future generations, smash that like button. Anyway, before the nuclear Armageddon, I think we left off looking for some scrap. We we're probably trying to repair our weapons and armor. Maybe even have a few supplies left so we can continue building up our camp. I didn't even really know what to do. There's no way to contact him and let him know I'm alive, so I left a comment. Yeah, it's the end of the world, and I'm leaving a YouTube comment. I'm not alone. Wow. Wow, this is a lot to process. I spent most of the rest of the day troubleshooting the elevator, and I actually learned something. The elevator blocks have to be in the exact same XZ coordinates. I had one offset to allow for power while the other was in the middle. Knowing this is going to actually help, I can make elevators, I can expand them, I can make more pretty easily now. I think that's been my holdup with the main elevator as well. Cool. I need more Fluix crystals again, and I still haven't taken time to automate because it's a little bit more complicated. I have to drop redstone dust quartz and charge certus quartz in water, wait a few seconds, and then pick it up. I have a few options here. I made an actually additions precision dropper to make sure that the items land specifically exactly where I want them to and not all over the place. Then a vacuum chest with a filter to pick up only Fluix crystals. I'll use my ender chest system to have an ME controller and put the three items I need into a purple white white ender chest and then the all white ender chest to pick up the Fluix out of the vacuum chest. Yeah, should work great. It took an entire day, but I'm glad I got it all worked out. My new magnet card I added to my wireless ME is kind of messing up things a little bit. I mean, didn't add those four items to some sort of blacklist, but either way, this is super cool. I have Fluix on command. I add another elevator. I'm in some sort of mood. Knowing that at least one other human is alive has kind of changed everything for me. The walls are greener. The smell of this bunker is less terrible. The chickens, well, look, the chickens are still annoying, but whatever, someone else is out there. My new elevator just goes from my workshop down to my auto crafting area, but yeah, it's really cool. It's a very immersive, cool feel to take the elevator down to throw in some auto crafting or whatever I need. Also, I found some more back hidden sort of crappy wire areas to change over to some better textures. And yeah, that'll look a lot nicer as well. Yeah, everything's coming together. I was hanging out in my backyard watching the sunset tonight and the most amazing thing happened. Two dogs wandered up. I have no idea how they got into my bunker, but talk about a cure to my loneliness. I named them Sydney and Barney and they fell in love and I fell in love. We all fell in love pretty much instantly. Wow, really great. I started a huge project today, my liquid tank room. I have basically two routes that I can pursue. Either I use ME to digitally hold all of my liquids, which honestly would probably be the easier route, or I can go the harder but way more awesome route of huge tanks to hold all 53 liquids. Well, look, I have all my life to finish this project, so I'll go the latter. Let's get digging. Continuing my efforts to pile project on top of project on top of project, I started digging out my ender chest storage. I'm kind of fed up with running up to the chickens to get every single material I ever need and want to have something set up forever. I'm sure I'll finish this before I die of old age, right? Probably? Maybe? Today was actually a logistical nightmare. I worked and worked and worked some more on trying to figure out the best way to get 80 channels up to my second floor. There is such a thing as a second ME unit, but I'm so close it's only like 8 meters above my workshop, I don't really see a need to do that. That being said, my cables are a complete disaster. I dug out under the main ender chest storage room and colored some dense cables so they don't connect anywhere I don't want them to. I do enjoy this sort of puzzle, but also I would actually like to find a solution as well. I think I got it all sorted out, actually. 
It's gonna be a serious grind, but once I'm done, I should have access to every single resource and essentially infinite supply of just about everything on command. Well, that's a beautiful thing. If I counted right, I think I'm about halfway you know, I, I knew this was going to be a huge project, but even knowing that, I think possibly I underestimated it just a little bit. But that's okay. We're going to get it, and it's going to be awesome. Day 170. More of this. Mm-hmm. More of this. Just when I thought I was finished, I realized I forgot the middle bank of chickens. The problem is there isn't really room in, for ender chests because there's only one meter space. So I'm going to have to run cable and just storage bus hub their barrels. Look, if I'm being honest, I probably should have done this all the way, but I was trying to be cute and move things around wirelessly without ender chest, but there's really no reason why I couldn't have just used storage buses on the back of all of the barrels. That actually, yeah, that that would have made a lot more sense. I, I, I don't know why I didn't do that. After running around all these cables and doing all the massive amount of work, I returned to my workshop for the first time in a few days, only to find a total disaster. I added some new facades and left the four colored dense cables out. I think they look pretty cool and they bring some life into the room. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice actually. Storage, baby, storage. You just can't get enough of it. Well, maybe you can and look, maybe I have enough of it. Finish off my drive room today. I don't have that many drive discs right now, but man, the room looks awesome. And I feel really good about the state of my bunker right now. I do want to return to the fluid room soon. I got totally sidetracked by all this, but Hey, it was well worth it. This is really nice. I broke away from storage today to work on <sighs> more storage. Okay, look, I know, I know, but I, I have these bonsai trees growing since my first couple days here, and I've done literally nothing with them. I was going to do something fancy with storage drawers and whatnot, but, you know, I just slapped eight ender chests under them and let them import everything into my ME system. Easy peasy. I added more deep storage today. I'm just loving my bunker these days. Honestly, the thought of living down here forever and ever is starting to not be so terrible. That being said, I do want to spend some real time on recreation soon. I have a couple ideas that could actually turn out to be very fun. Hey, can a guy change his mind? Is that okay? You know, I was going to do this massive tank room. I think it would look really cool, but after expanding my storage so massively, I kind of really don't see a need to, to be honest. I think I'm just going to double my ender chest storage for my ender tank storage and import the fluids right into my ME system. So I carved out a room for my ender tanks and it turns out that now I'm going to have a giant room down my basement beside my cows that is pretty much useless. I don't know, maybe we'll do a basketball court or something fun. Today kind of morphed into a troubleshooting day. I noticed I had barely any purple dye in my storage. That's weird. I thought I assumed I should have a full inventory worth. Maybe I forgot a chicken. No, I made a purple chicken and it was exporting from barrel into the ender chest. So maybe I missed a colored ender chest. No, again, I double checked, but I found the problem. My dense cables, which should be holding 32 channels each, but they're only holding eight each. Yeah, th this turned out to be a real big problem. It turns out that Fluix colored cables connect to all colors cables. So basically in the back of my ender chest, I just had a big jumble of wires. So what I use is cable anchors on every colored one that connects to a Fluix cable to sort of separate them. And uh, that actually worked. So that worked fine. And that gave each dense cable its total maximum of 32 channels. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a pain to sort out, but it actually worked and everything was fine spent the day color matching my ender tanks. It's all going good. It's a little bit complicated because some of these colors that I chose are awfully close together, but a little educated guessing and we're all good. I'm very excited to have this all done. I think this might be my last really huge storage related project ever, except for food. There's always food. Yeah, food. Hey everybody. Well, nobody I mean. Welcome back to another episode of Fallout. Before we get into it, a little life update. I've been having a great time working on expanding my bunker in the basement these couple of weeks. It's been great actually. I have a good power situation going, and I'm working on a lot more food choices. My next project though is radio, and not just any radio. I remember learning about shortwave radios and how they have a huge broadcast range. The only internet I could figure out how to get working can only upload to these isolated backup servers. If I can get a shortwave radio working, I'll start broadcasting each night. And 
just try to connect with someone, anyone. Maybe there's still someone out there, alive. Anyway, back to the game. Today we're going to be going around looking for some ammo, which is kind of dangerous because all of the enemies are quite dangerous now with nobody else on the server to play with. It's kind of lonely in-game and out. Dom is building a radio. This is amazing. I can't even believe if we can both work out how to build a shortwave radio, perhaps we can communicate? I had honestly chalked this up as some sort of pipe dream talking to another human being, but now maybe it's possible. I am flying high with the thought of talking to someone again. I sent my autocrafting to two of the biggest projects ever. I taught it 64k disk drives for both solids and fluids and set it to making four 64k fluid drives. That in itself is going to take ages, but on top of that, I taught fluid storage bus, starting to make 54 of those for my ender tanks. Yeah, this is going to be running for a while. I'm going to have to go do a different project while I wait. You know, one thing I want to do is I want to improve my living situation here a little bit more. I, I have endless supplies and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine, but part of expanding my base is going to be kind of expanding my base within my base, my actual living quarters. I built a staircase going up and carved out a theater upstairs. I think it's going to be so great to put a video on and just relax from time to time. I finished outfitting my theater with a small kitchen, couch, even a fireplace. I had a smoke detector just in case. I'm happy. And now I think it's time to just settle in and watch a, watch a video from one of the YouTube backup servers. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Incoming message. <sighs> Incoming message. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes, yes, message. yes. Play, play message. Message from Captain Ramirez. This message is for any survivors of the Sheriff. I imagine the computer woke you from deep sleep and you're likely a little foggy. Our ship, the Sheriff, was hopelessly caught in a singularity and hurled back through time. By the time we realised what was going on, I ordered abandoned ship. What I learned later is I knocked out a lot of dad's book today something about a movie night just get your mind right I feel refreshed and ready to go I did a bunch of quests everything from storage to drawers to controllers different barrel upgrades all that kind of stuff feels good to be making progress in the book even if I'm kind of wasting materials but hey you know what materials are free and that's fine the only real thing of note today is I finally figured out how to get pink slime after essentially endless trial and error Hey, you know what? I finally have a use for this big dumb room. I keep running out of service quartz. It's not good. I don't really have any way to make tons of it. There isn't a chicken or cow for it, so I doubled my sand to dust sieving production and hope it will help, but seriously, there has to be a better way. Dad's book has nothing. Nothing at all. A big day today. I finished my liquid storage. Really, this is amazing. I have now endless supplies to all the chicken items and all the cow liquid in the entire world. I mean, what a great feeling. I've decided I want to start something called Draconic Evolution. And to do that, I really need access to Wither Stars. And to do that, I need access to Wither Skeletons. And my mob farm is just not really doing it. So I, I need to get serious here. I turned off and expanded my dark room quite a bit. I'm going to rework this. I have kind of an idea and there's going to be some probably trial and error on this as well. I had some nicer walls and made a grinder and hooked that up to power. Hopefully anything that it kills will just go right into my Emmy system as well. Uh, not too bad. The cursed earth should spread all over the dirt and that's fine. Next, I need witch water and I need a lot of it. I did it. It was a little more complex than I expected, but by using an Ender Jessen interface, I can tell the ME system to put spores in and an empty bucket. The spores will go into a water-filled uh, stone barrel and a bucket into a mechanical user. The user is set to activate with block, and sure enough, it fills up the bucket with witch water. It's pretty cool. The only other issue I have is I don't really have a source of spores, so I guess that is probably going to be the next project. Hey everyone, hello and welcome to another episode of Fallout. I have an exciting real life update first. I got my radio working and I'll be broadcasting tonight at 9 on frequency 742.832. I'll be honest, I'm hopeful, but I shouldn't be. 
I know the whole world was blown to bits, but somehow, I'm still hopeful someone will be out there listening when I broadcast. Anyway, been on the hunt for one of these legendary enemies. I need to start updating my weapons, and probably my armor too. Maybe we should be doing more events for some gold bullion. I spent a good deal of time today working on a radio. Now that I know Dom is going to be broadcasting for sure, I need to talk to him. Building this thing is very difficult because it's not covered in Dad's book, so there's a lot of trial and error. After working on the radio for a good bit, I need to clear my head, so I made an auto server for sand. Should be a nice source of spores in just a few minutes. I only actually need one more for my plan to work for the mob farm, but hopefully I'll get that soon and be able to complete it. I want a source of mycelium. I don't know why exactly I need it right now, but I can see in the future I might, and I want to be prepared. I haven't gotten lucky and gotten the last spore I need yet, so I spent the day automating mycelium production, and to do that, first I have to make mushrooms, both red and brown. To get that, I need to sieve sponges. And to make sponges, I need to hammer logs. Okay, not a big deal, so I added those three machines today. Nice. I got the dark room ready. Cursed earth down, some dark glass so I can see what's going on in there, and yet, light is still creeping in. Where from? I, I have no idea. Maybe a lantern I have somewhere, maybe in one of the sub-basements. I don't know. I spent the entire rest of the day hunting down that one lantern. I tracked down the lantern, and it works. I already got one wither skull. This isn't ideal, because what I need is I need a regular skeleton to spawn on the cursed earth. And before the grinder kills it, which is pretty frequently, happened to touch the witch water. So yeah, that's, that doesn't happen very frequently. So I'm not getting a lot of wither skeletons here. Uh, I think what I need to do is maybe put it on a timer or something, but yeah, I, I could probably work that out actually. Though I haven't gotten those other two wither skulls yet, I am getting a lot of armor, bows, helmets, chainmail, all that kind of junk. And I was going to trash it all, but I think maybe I might have a use. So I made something called an anti-barrel and actually then ended up making a couple more with a fuzzy filter, which means it will take all bows regardless of enchants and put them in. It does unstackable items up to many, 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 many versions in just one barrel. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I did stay awake very late tonight after working on the anti-barrel stuff, working on the radio. I think maybe I got it working. I am very, very excited. I'm hoping tomorrow, whenever Dom does his evening task, I will be able to actually talk back. That's pretty thrilling. Hello. Hello? Testing. One, two. H Hello? Hi. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Hello? Whoa. Who's this? Hi. I'm Fred. My name is Fred. Hey, Fred. Uh, I, am, I can't believe I'm actually talking to another human being. Yeah, I know. It's been 195 days. 213 days, actually. Oh, yeah, right. I had some rough days there when I found out my dad was an AI. I just kind of... Well, don't count them. Okay, are you in Philadelphia near me? I'm in a bunker down below. No, I'm in a bunker near Pittsburgh. I didn't think anyone else made it through this. No one else? How bad was it? Are there rescue teams? No. Dom, there's nothing. I have a connection to a satellite with a artificial intelligence on board. There's nothing out there. I thought for sure I've been hearing things outside the hatch. Are you certain? I'm as certain as my AI can tell from a satellite. How did you find this radio channel? My, my video? My Fallout video? Yeah. Believe it or not, I saw your upload and I've been working on a radio ever since you talked about it. Wow, that's so awesome. So, we're it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think we're all that's left. So, tell me about your bunker. I can't even explain the high I'm on after talking to Dom through much of the night. Amazing! I do, however, have some bunker work to get to today. I have a few things piling up like crazy. One thing is called Solidified EXP. I tried clicking on it and, okay, I guess this isn't shocking probably, but it gave me EXP. Pretty cool. I used up a lot of it just to see how high I could get. With the mob farm and liquid cows, I guess it is pretty renewable at this point. Nice. I expanded the back wall of the mob farm just a little bit more and put witch water on a timer. I think this will allow skeletons to spawn, then get pushed by witch water into range of the grinder, and by then they'll have converted into wither skeletons. 
Time will tell on this one, but I am extremely hopeful. I need to do a bit more troubleshooting again today. I'm out of ink and a few other things. Basically what happened is I messed up the color coding of the chicken drops and had to go through a fairly painstaking process of checking each one in each set of eight to see where I missed a color. Yeah, it was a real fun day. Really, really fun day. I threw together a wither killing room quickly today. I still need one more wither skull though, and well, that's not great. I need to figure out how to get more. I made these witherproof blocks to build a cage from. I think it will keep him in place while the draconic evolution grinder does its thing. Should be fairly safe. Fred, are you there? Oh, yeah. Hey, bud. How's it going? I'm not sure. I've heard some very loud sounds outside again. It's below my tiny windows, so I can't see anything. But it's almost like scratching. Could it be an animal? Maybe? I don't know. It's probably my imagination, but I thought I heard a moaning sound. Whoa. Whoa, dude. That's creepy. Yeah, you're telling me. Anyway... I'm sure it's nothing. What were we talking about last night? Oh, right. So, why did your dad always call you Bob? Yeah, weird noises outside Dom's bunker. That's concerning, to say the least. We were up most of the night again, talking. The noises came back, but only once. Maybe whatever made it is gone for good. I sure hope so. I spent the whole day standing at my darkroom window, just waiting for my final wither skull. I got my second right away, but still waiting on a third. I got it, and I don't know if it was just bad luck or what, but this new farm seems to be pretty efficient. While I was just preparing to kill the wither, I actually got two more. Amazing. I should be swimming in wither stars very soon. Before killing him, this is weird. I jumped, and I didn't come down. Apparently, while I was killing mobs, one of them dropped something called a air charm, and somehow I accidentally equipped it. So, I guess I can fly now. It's, it's kind of cool. It's not really flying. It's, it's actually kind of like walking through the air. Weird, and also cool. I put down the soul sand, the three wither skulls, and I summoned him. And, for once, everything went great. He pretty much instantly died. The Draconic Evolution Grinder took him out immediately. Nothing broke because of my Wither Cage. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. I got a Nether Star. Awesome. I took some time today to reflect on the last 200 days. It started right here, right in this place. Somehow I created my home here and all alone from just nothing, just stone. Looking around, it's nothing short of a miracle. I set up farms, both food and monsters, power that should last the rest of time. Storage for so many items I can't even count them. A house. <laughs> a house I can be happy in, even with a backyard and a pool. Even with all that, I wasn't doing well until I found a friend. Through YouTube videos and then eventually the radio, I learned that I am not alone. Even if it's just a voice coming through a couple small speakers, I have a friend. And these past 10 days, I went from complete solitary confinement to spending each night talking about what we were doing in our respective bunkers, our families from before the bombs, our life, our hopes, our dreams. What a transformation. I've spent 200 days creating life for myself here, but it wasn't until these last 10 that I remembered what life is truly about. It's about connections, real connections between people. Just be able to talk to a friend. I know now that I can make it another 100. No, 200. No, another thousand days down here. Life is good. Fred, Fred, are you there? There's something, there's something outside my hatch. It's banging on it. Fred, I saw it. I don't know what it is. It's huge. And I, I don't know. It's horrible. A mutant or something. Uh, th and there's more of them. Fred, it's trying to get in. Fred, I have to go barricade the door. I hope they don't find you. you all enjoyed part two of our 100 days bunker journey with fred i sure enjoyed writing it before we get into all the thanks and what's coming next i want to quickly thank the sponsor of this video the archon 
Not only is the Archon one of the biggest Minecraft networks that still operates with different game modes, including custom servers, but they've offered my subscribers a special deal for a free rank. If you go to shop.thearchon.net, click on free rank and enter your username, select a realm, then enter my coupon, FIX, that's F-I-X, you'll get a special $5 rank that will make the server more fun. Join fix.archonhq.net with Minecraft 1.8 or newer and start playing. I'll see you there. Well, how about it? Before I tell you what's coming next, I want to say thank you to our friend Callus for reprising his role as Fred's dad, and our new guest star, Don Quantum. If you like Fallout and Minecraft, you are doing yourself a grave disservice if you're not subscribed to my friend Dom. Seriously, you saw some of his Fallout Let's Plays in the video, but check out these Minecraft builds. My dude is really amazing and has one of my very favorite Let's Plays on YouTube right now called The Lands of Elysian. It's a tremendous series by a tremendous person. Go hit up Dom's channel and thank me later. Next up will be Let's Play Survival video for my long-term world, Bedrock RTX Survival with Fix, then back to the 100 Days format to finish off my Mage Trilogy. I think some of you might think you know what's coming up, but I assure you, you don't. I have the outline done and ready, I just need to hit record. Special thank you to my patrons and YouTube members, you guys are the all-stars that make everything I do possible here on the channel. Patreons and YouTube members get exclusive 100 days world downloads as well as first 20 days previews and many other perks. Check out the link in the description down below if you are so interested. Again, I want to say special thank you to Archon for sponsoring this video. It's the first sponsor I've accepted and I am very grateful for them taking a chance on a little guy like me. Please do me a favor and go check out their server. I was on just a couple days ago and it is a lot of fun. Thank you again for spending part of your day with me. I'll see you next time.